Clap, y'all. Make some noise. Make some noise. Make some noise. Yeah. How y'all feeling? Y'all good? Y'all look good. There's a couple ugly girls in here, but that ain't what we're gonna talk about first. No, because it's more beautiful women, and I like that. I like when they come out. I don't like doing shows with ugly girls and make it hard for me to concentrate. <laughs> For real, you haven't been to an event and there's an ugly girl there and you can't focus on the event, you keep looking at her. And then she get mad at you, like, what you looking at? You're like, bitch, you the problem. <laughs> if I knew you was gonna be here, I would've went next door. This shit's hard. Some stupid shit I gotta do. Or I recently did a show, it was a small, intimate show, so you could see everybody. So I was doing all these jokes, and after the show, this ugly girl came up to me. She was like, you was funny, but I ain't like that joke you did about ugly girls. Well, I did that joke for you. <laughs> Ungrateful, hard to please. Just... For real, I recently cut my hair and people think I did it for fashion, I didn't. I didn't know it was gonna look nice. I did not. I did it because my rent went up. <laughs> and I needed a budget cut. <laughs> this was some adult shit right here. I was like, all right, let me see what I can let go. It's gonna be the hair, I gotta let the bundles go. They got too expensive. Remember back in the day, you could just get you two packs of Outre, you'd be good for two weeks. Say, get you the yaki. Not no more. Girls with bundles be bud bundle judging the rest of the bundles. You can't just walk in the club with three bundles because you got bitches over here with seven bundles looking at you like. That bitch got three bundles. For real, I went to the club. This girl came in the club with one bundle. One, I was like, bitch, you could've got some cornrows. What are you with one bundle for? And the bundle girls, they was in the corner looking at it. They was like, you see that bitch with one bundle? They took a picture of her, made her a meme, uploaded it on Instagram. They put a hashtag on it. I was like, damn, they move fast. The hashtag said, thin bundle bitch. I called my barber the next morning. I said, I'm going to get a cut. I gotta get out this group. These bitches are judgmental. It's cool, it's, it's low maintenance. You know, I get to places on time, white people trust me more. <laughs> it don't look like I still with this haircut till I take my glasses off. I'm still a nigga. <laughs> still a nigga at heart around my niggas. Now it's crazy, like I'm tired of explaining to white people that it's two different types of black people. Black people, we know it's two different types. I just found out this year it was two different types of white people. Did y'all know that? <laughs> No, nah, black people ain't know that. We always thought all white people was the same. I'll speak for all of us, we did. We always thought y'all was the same. Snitches at work, that's what we thought y'all was. <laughs> nothing more, nothing less, that's a snitch. Don't trust the bitch. Just... You wanna go out for drinks? I'll buy you Hennessy? No, bitch, so you can find out who I really am? Hell no. Oh no, you at the co-worker party and shit, drinking wine? You don't even drink wine, you got to, so you can be calm. If you get the Hennessy, you gonna get fired tomorrow. Don't trust the <laughs> Become your selfish shit, <laughs> like, oh, it's really a nigga. No, bitch, surprise. <laughs> keep your mask on. Now I ain't know it was two different types of white people though until Trump won. It really showed that it was two different types. Like, it's really white people that don't like other white people. <laughs> Those are my favorite type of white people. <laughs> I love them. I'm like, what? You hate them too? <laughs> For real. I ain't know. Like, I knew it was always two different types of black people. And we always got to explain for the other type of black people. And that shit get on your nerves. Because you be like, I'm not like this nigga. <laughs> Girl, you ever got to step outside your black and call another nigga a nigga? <laughs> Just to prove you ain't like him? Like, nigga! Why would you do that in front of this white lady? <laughs> this is what they be talking about. Eight years old, Obama nigga, and you gonna do this? <laughs> Bullshit. For real, it's two types. It's us that's here. We regular black. I seen y'all before I came up here. I was like, all right, these regular black people. We all the same. And then is I'm scared of that nigga too black. Y'all ever seen him? <laughs> seen that other type of black that nigga scare you too? You're like, this nigga is <laughs> scary to everybody. <laughs> you can't even make eye contact with him because then the nigga lock ass with you like a dog. You gotta just look straight as shit when you see him looking at him. Just, eventually this nigga will leave me alone. <laughs> just look like I'm busy. 
I ain't know. But the Metro show you that it's two different types of black people. I don't know who was in charge of that shit, but they knew. Real, because you got the red line, right? Glenmont to Shady Grove, that's the safe black line, right? You could take a nap, you could drop your phone while you sleep. A white lady would wake you up like, here, you dropped this. Oh, shit, thank you, man. You want to buy that one of these? Thank you so much, Miss White Man. That's what we call y'all. But real, then they got the green line. Nigga! <laughs> shit! You can't take a nap, nigga. You can't sit down. You just stand up close as shit to the door. Please stand clear of the doors. No, bitch, I don't feel safe. Keep this shit open. Ride with the doors open. <laughs> it's in case I gotta run, bitch. It's not safe on here. I got on the green line one morning, right? I got on the green line one day in the morning, five o'clock in the morning, me and this white lady got on the green line together. She had Starbucks, I had Starbucks, she trusted me. <laughs> that's what's gonna end racism, Starbucks, if y'all ain't know, like that shit really gonna bring us together. Now I thought we was friends, we made a toast, I was like, all right, this is cool. I ain't never had this experience in the morning, this is all right with me. This black guy got on 30 minutes after us, 5.30 in the morning with a ski mask. I was like, nigga, for breakfast? What the fuck is wrong with this nigga? But she ain't think I was scared, because I was black too, so she looked at him and then looked back at me like I was his representative. Said, no, bitch, he is scary to everybody. We need to call the police. It's teamwork. She was like, this doesn't look safe. I was like, you damn right it don't. Look at this nigga. <laughs> nigga had on the ski mask with some earphones and dancing. I was like, nigga, you a killer or a dancer? That shit is, it's too early to try to figure out what you're doing. She was like, stay here. I'm gonna go get us help. She told me, wait next to this nigga. Like he wasn't gonna kill me before she came back. Like this ain't how this shit work. I ain't running the train no more. I don't trust white people. So I start riding Uber, but not regular Uber, Uber pool. <laughs> it's better, it's better. You can't beat that for $3, right? You can't beat riding with a stranger for $3. I just wish they told us more about the people we was riding with. They don't tell you shit, they just put a little circle picture and a name. Like, I, that's not enough for me to feel safe. I want some bullet points. I want a description about what this person do when they not in Uber pool. I want to know what they do at work. Because think about it. What if you call an Uber pool and they pull up and it show you the bullet points and the first bullet point say murderer. For $3, I'm going to rob this killer. I'm going to hope he just came from killing so I'm the break in between. I know you need a break after you kill somebody. I know you do. Called me at Uber pool last week and a van pulled up outside my house. I was like, I know damn well I ain't call a van. <laughs> I called the Uber pool. So I looked at the tag number, they matched up. So I was like, all right, this is me. But I was scared, because I'm like, I ain't never seen nobody get in a van and get out of a van. <laughs> Usually you see somebody get in a van and that's the end of the movie. <laughs> you gotta go see part two next summer and shit. Like, I don't know. <laughs> if I should do this. But I was already late to work, so I was like, let me get in this van. Got in the van. I looked around, it was five other people in the van. I was like, sir, this is not an Uber pool. This is an Uber field trip. Where the fuck <laughs> are all these people going? We took this lady home, we picked this other lady up from work. They gave me the alt score, because I was the only black one. I cut on Cardi B. <laughs> we was dancing. I was like, all right, this is not bad for $3. <laughs> Next thing I know, the lady in the far back seat poured out a bottle of Hennessy and started passing out shots. <laughs> I was like, for $3, you can't beat this. <laughs> I ain't never had Hennessy for $3. <laughs> I told the driver, I was like, drop me off last, nigga. This is, this is exciting. I just recently quit my job, though, because I got tired of working with white people. No, this is true. White women are too entitled. 
They feel like they deserve the world and they should have everything. No. I don't have to do that to you. Let me tell you why. I work for a temp agency, so that's part-time. I only do part-time shit at work. <laughs> Anything full-time, that's not my life. I'm not doing that. Like, I'm a side chick at work. I got a schedule. I write down the shit I'm gonna do for the day. That's it, nothing extra. And I work at the front desk of apartment buildings, concierge, you know, for white people in the buildings where y'all pay like 3,200 for one bedroom. <laughs> that's stupid shit, and they feel so entitled because they pay that much. I don't give a damn. I work for a temp agency. I do part-time shit. So I came to work one morning, this white lady came to my desk. She was like, good morning. I was like, good morning. She was like, there's a grasshopper in the elevator. I'm like, this must be some full-time shit because I ain't never seen this on my to-do list. It's a grasshopper, I'm sure he's grasshopping. He doing what the fuck he's supposed to do. He's living his purpose that the Lord wants him to live, right? So I didn't get up, because what am I supposed to do? Kill him? Look, man, I'm not a murderer. I don't kill people for no reason, not the police. I like to do that joke and then look at white people, because it shows who's Trump supporters. If they clap, that's like, oh, they not. If they don't clap, they're like, you the problem, you are the problem. Kill the grasshopper. Stupid shit. I smoke a lot of weed. I do, because I'm a Christian, and I think, hon <laughs> listen, honestly, for real, listen, I think that God put weed here for us when he can't get to our problems on time. I think weed is the medicine that you're supposed to take until he can make his way around to get back to you. You got a doctor be like, okay, you got the flu, here you go. Come back in two weeks, I think that's the weed for God. He like, take this. I'm not gonna be there on time. But when I'm done healing this person, I'll be back to get you. Right? So I smoke a lot of weed. Uh, but I just recently had to find fire my weed man. So if anybody in here sell weed, let me know after the show. Uh, all right. There's some white people in the front, so don't be too hot about it. I still don't trust them. I still don't. <laughs> Fucking had the police outside the show. I still don't trust them. Y'all cool, but I don't trust y'all. I'm not gonna lie. Um, but I had to find my weed man. He was a black drug dealer. You know, they say that black people don't support black businesses. Um, I try to change that. I said, I'm gonna keep a black drug dealer, even though weed is legal, and I can PayPal my white friend and get the shit. I was like, I ain't gonna do that. Straight cash to the black man, because I'm supporting black. But black didn't support me back. And that's where we went wrong. All I asked him to do was be on time with my weed. That's it. Because when you don't get your weed on time, you start losing your mind, cussing people out for no reason, all because you just need your weed. Now you got smoking and start apologizing. I'm tired of that shit. So I'm just like, just bring my weed on time. So I called him, I said, hey, I need a package, because you know sometimes the police be listening. So I'm like, I need a package. He said, I'd be there in 30 minutes. When somebody tell you 30 minutes, how long do you expect to wait? Y'all sound like y'all get cheated on a lot. Y'all need to change y'all life standards. Somebody tell you 30 minutes, you need to wait 30 minutes, that's it. Don't wait two hours. That's ridiculous. You tell me 30 minutes, I'm expecting 30 minutes, maybe 29 if you feel like speeding. Right. So 30 minutes came, he wasn't there. I called him, I said, hey, where you at? He said, I'm gonna be 15 minutes late. Now, I don't get mad, I just get petty. So I got upset, and I called the police. <laughs> Listen, there's people in jail right now for really selling weed, on time. They need to come home, because they was doing the job. These late niggas need to go to jail and sit and think about it. So he's still locked up right now. Um, that's why I feel safe doing this joke. He be out sometime on the 15th or something like that. He wrote me. <laughs> crazy. Oh, man. Where the parents at? Parents in here? 
Ooh, y'all clapping with attitudes. Yeah. Fuck them kids, I'm not around them now. Yeah. Dang, y'all don't like them. I don't like kids neither. I'm tell y'all the truth. I like, I really like, sons are okay. Sons don't, you know, they don't bother you too much. I was a side chick before I graduated. Back in the day. Um, but I still had a haircut then. So when I was a side chick and they had sons, they get in the car, they don't bother you. I just put a hood on, get in the front seat, they don't even know I'm who I am. They think I'm the father friend. A man. So that works out when they get dropped off to their mother, because you know mothers like to ask who was in the car. And she say, Daddy, Frank, Kevin, because I had my hood on. <laughs> <laughs> sons are okay. I don't get along with daughters. I don't. They always got something to say, and they should. I was dating this guy, he had a daughter. And he brought the daughter on the first date. Same should I say, but he had good credit, so I was like, I'ma see what I can get out of this. So we went on the first date. She was in the back seat, I was in the front seat. I was drinking Hennessy. She had a little juicy juice. It kind of felt like an Uber pool, so I was comfortable. <laughs> I was like, how you doing, little girl? You cute? She wasn't cute, but I was like, if I give her a compliment, she should give me one back, right? That's it. She didn't. I was like, how you doing, little girl? You cute. She was like, ugh, don't talk to me. You not my mother. So don't get mad, get what? I was like, baby bitch. <laughs> You know what, she told her truth, I should be able to tell my truth. So I took a shot, and I was like, you know what, you're right, I'm not your mother. But he might not be your father, neither. <laughs> so now we don't date no more. That's how you get out of that. That's how you I'm a Christian, I'm working on myself. <laughs> Christian, it's a new year, you know what I'm saying? When you're a Christian, you go to church around the New Year's, they start telling you the shit they've been telling you for the last 10 years, right? They tell you this your season, even though they told you that 10 years ago. Like, it's been my season for a long time, Lord. When am I gonna reap the benefits, right? Let me tell you why I'm a Christian, because they said that being a Christian, they promise you that God will handle everything that you can't handle. All you gotta do is do what you can, and God got the rest. So I'm doing what I can, but the bill collectors keep calling me. <laughs> and I can't do that. So as a Christian, you know, I answered the phone last time they called, I'm like, listen, the Lord is gonna get in contact with y'all. <laughs> <laughs> when he's ready. Yolanda Adam told us a long time ago, the ba that battle is not mine, it's the Lord's. <laughs> Ask some stupid questions. When can you make a payment? <laughs> Bitch, I just left the mall. I can't. <laughs> Say my Facebook status because they follow me on Facebook. They be liking my pictures and leaving comments and shit. <laughs> Try to embarrass me. <sighs> y'all have been fun. Tell y'all this last joke and then I'm gonna get out of here. So I told y'all that I cut my hair, but ever since I cut my hair, right, people like to tell me who they think I look like. Sexy! Well, despite that. <laughs> Thanks, ma'am. Eve, right? But you know that Eve is now a billionaire? <laughs> so when they tell me that, that's negativity on my life. <laughs> Cause I still be calling Bank of America dis disputing shit that I really did myself. Anybody else dispute some shit with the bank that you know you did, making up a lie? No, I did not leave out the house on December 26th. I was taking care of my grandmother. I just don't know who had my car. So I was like, for the new year, I'm gonna start telling people who I think they look like to me so they'll stop telling me who they think I look like, right? Eve is cool. So this lady came up to me, she was like, oh my gosh, you look like Eve, I know you hear it all the time. I was like, thank you, I do. Can I tell you who I think 
<laughs> you look like, to me. She was like, yeah. I was like, ooh. <laughs> so I looked at my phone, I looked at Google, and she was like, who you think? And I was like. <laughs> so I wanted to make sure. I was like, Tyler Perry. <laughs> and she was like, Medea? I was like, no, bitch, regular Tyler. <laughs> Cut it, DJ. <laughs> Y'all make some noise again for Paris, man. Yeah.